Hi everyone and welcome to this new tutorial. First of all, thank you very much for all the people that took the time to comment on my previous video. I really uh, appreciate it. Now, today let's look at a grime type of instrumental. If you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to my channel as I'm trying to grow it and invest more time and money on my videos. Alright, let's get started. Let's listen to a preview of the track. Alright, let's do it. So the first thing, as last time, click on Browse Loops and here you can just type Crime. So we have two different sample types. We'll be using some of these loops, but for the drums I've decided to use this Trap sample pack. Very simple, hold click and drag and drop it on your projects. Now if you press play, you can hear it back. That's our main loop and on top of that, I'm going to use a second one. As a starting point, try not to use too many different drum loops, just one or two maybe. Let's look at this grime sample pack. Here we're going to use a very very common sound that you probably heard before. Skepta. And now we can listen to the drums and this lead. You can adjust the volume and turn it down, because now I think the drums are too quiet. Now a bit of copy and paste, so remember all you have to do is to press ALT on your keyboard and then just slide it to the side. And now we're going to try something a bit different, so we want to make this loop a bit more interesting and complex. So here, first thing, make it shorter. We just want to extract that one note. So just click on the bottom right of your loop to make it shorter. And here you can place it anywhere you want, but try to stick to the grid. So here I'm placing it on the fourth beat. And here we're going to change that note. So we're going to transpose it. So you can uh, double click on that note and here you can see I'm clicking the plus and that means it's now one semitone higher. Uh, let's hear the difference. So that sounds pretty dark because it's only a semitone higher. Now what can work as well is a minor third, which is three semitones higher. Let's move on to the bass and listen to our main loop. Cool, and now in context. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing is I'm copying and pasting it to make it a bit longer. And now for the chorus, we're going to look at something new. We're going to reverse it. And instead of using the whole loop, I'm just going to keep that last note. Copy and paste. 
and some more copy and paste. Same trick as last time, we're going to pitch that last note a semitone higher. Always copy and paste. And now we need some change, so what we will do is a drop, so there will be nothing on the first and second beat, and then the instruments will come back in on the third beat. All I'm doing here is some copy and paste again. We basically have a verse and a sort of chorus. A very common structure is to have a verse, a chorus, and then a verse, and another chorus. But right now, let's just add another element to our chorus. And now let's hear this loop in context. And now you can add it to both choruses. great to have a smoother transition between the verse and chorus, so we're going to use a riser. You can see here on the screen where I found it, and now I'm basically placing it just before the chorus. You can place it before both choruses. And now the very last element that I'm going to add is a shaker. And this time I'll only place it on the second chorus just to have some variations. We're going to do a cool trick here. Instead of having the shaker on the beat, we're going to place it off beat. Here you can see I'm zooming in and you can see it falls between these two values. And you can hear it, it really starts to sound more interesting and adds some groove to our track. And here let's do another variation on the chorus. So we are going to drop everything but the shaker. We basically have all our loops and we have a full structure. So now we're going to add some more subtle variations and effects. The first one I'm adding is a reverb, so you can see on the screen where I'm adding the effect. Ensure to be on the right track, so here I have to select the choir loop. And I'm doing this to have a smoother transition from the chorus to the verse. It gives more sustain to the sound and it doesn't cut too uh, sharply. And now we will do an automation, so that way we don't have the uh, reverb effect the whole time, but only on that last part. So if you press A on your keyboard, then you have this menu, and then we play with the mix parameter. When the mix is on zero, you have no effect at all, and if you turn the mix up, then you hear more reverb. In a 
a very similar way we'll do the same thing for the drums in order to have an outro uh, here we will be using a delay instead of a reverb as you can see there are different parameters and the one I'm boosting up is the feedback which is basically how many repetitions we have If you put more feedback, you'll have a longer delay. So yeah, here I put quite a bit of feedback and then again, we need to do an automation so we don't have the, this effect the whole way through. So here again, mix and then put it to zero and only boost it on that very last snare hit. Let's hear the final track. Thank you. 